This is a response video to this video by Andromeda's Wake. And I wanted to respond to the criticism of the shift from the geocentric worldview to the heliocentric worldview. And while I don't support the geocentric worldview, I wanted to uh, engage uh, Andromeda's Wake about this. And I think it's very poor form to bring religion into this argument. If you're talking about science, I think you should just leave it science. And I don't think that you should criticize a scientist for his religious views. And that said, um, I think that there's a certain amount of faith that Andromeda's Wake is putting in the um, conclusions of Albert Einstein. And if you look at the other arguments uh, against the heliocentric worldview, they're significant. There was a significant fight between the church and Galileo about this issue. And it wasn't for no reason. It wasn't for no good reason. And when Michelson and, and Morley discovered that there was this discrepancy in the concept of the Earth's movement relative to the rest of the ether, um, Michelson was crushed. He went to his grave believing they'd made a mistake of some sort. And so this was the scientist that actually did the work that made the discovery here we're talking about. And that issue about whether the luminiferous ether exists should be kept completely separate from any notion of religion. That said, there's another option that isn't considered. Um, I think that this argument has been strawmanned pretty seriously. Um, there's another option that isn't considered in the argument about whether or not the ether should be moving relative to the earth. Uh, you would say it's either moving, it's not moving, it's dragging with the earth, or it doesn't exist. There's another option, and that option is that the matter itself, that is the observational mechanism, is also propagating wave-like along with the light, or more specifically, that the perception of the light itself is a consequence of matter's propagation through that medium. And so that is something that was proposed by Walter Russell, and it resolves these other issues, these other lingering issues, about the experimental and observational anomalies that this video ignores. Those anomalies are the lack of a centrifugal force on the Earth. There's not a difference in the weight of an object at the poles versus the weight of the object at the equator. The equator is spinning very quickly relative to the poles, yet there's no difference in the centrifugal force. If you look at the Coriolis force, there is not enough Coriolis force on the Earth that would be accounted for by the movement of the, the equator at thousands of miles per hour. If the equator was actually moving at thousands of miles per hour and there was a differential in the movement there would be a significant Coriolis force, a constant sort of vortex that existed in the air and in the sea, theoretically from the Earth's movement on its axis, but there isn't any. If you look at the results for the uh, Foucault's pendulum, you'll find out that there have been numerable papers written to try to explain the anomalous movement of the pendulum. And these are lingering issues about this argument. These are lingering issues about the nature of whether the Earth is geocentric and whether there is a luminiferous ether. And to dismiss these issues, to dismiss these inconsistencies in our science, is to have faith in that conclusion. These are real, observable, reproducible types of things that do not conform to our normal conception of what it means for something to be in motion. And so in astrotometry, I'm proposing that there's another way to look at this, that it's the Earth's movement through time that produces the phenomenon of its spin on its axis, that produces the phenomenon of its movement around the sun, that the spin of the Earth is a different kind of motion, that normal physical motion, as we perceive it, has another level to it as the patterns, as the structures of the matter itself move through time. And the aggregate of this motion appears to us as what we see as the Earth's rotation.
I also want to mention that astrotometry in its third dimensional version uses the concept of a medium as an abstraction. It doesn't depend on this. There's a possibility that the sorts of movement that create the patterns might be on some level particulate also, or that rely on uh, a sort of geometry to the nature of time and space that is completely abstract from our normal three-dimensional concept of what our world actually is. But in the argument about whether or not we should model this movement, the movement of the Earth, the apparent movement of the Earth, that was validated by the discovery of, the sh the, of things like the shadows on Venus, whether we should model that as being an actual physical motion that is akin to the same sorts of motion that happened on the surface, or whether we need a new model for this, um, I think is very much up, up, up for debate. And so I'm proposing the chronocentric model, the model where this sort of movement comes out of the, emerges from the, the movement of matter as it moves through time. And so take a look at the videos here in astrotometry, and um, if you want to discuss this, um, I'm, I'm here to answer any questions you have. Um, and if you, if you want to try to make a video uh, debunking astrotometry, um, that's, that's fine too. Um, but uh, it'll probably be a lot harder target. And keep the religion out of it.